All right, good morning. We are going to do a crash course in 3D printing on the U-Print this morning. So uh, let's just head on in. So we are going to do a test print on our U-Print Plus printer from Symmetrix. And uh, well, let's just get started. You know, first off here, this is the U-Print itself that we have turned on. I just want to make sure that uh, it's ready and warm. So right now it's idle, the queue is empty and it's waiting for a part. So we're gonna be able to, from this stage, make sure uh, everything is good and then hop onto the computer and uh, load up a design. At the same time, you just wanna make sure the cleaning station is on because uh, once we print your part, which has support material around it, we'll want to actually clean off the support material, which will require this guy to be turned on. So we'll turn them on and uh, hopefully by the time the print is done, We'll be ready for the cleaning station. So the first thing you need to do is find one of the machines. There's several in the uh, in the prototyping area, but what you'll want to do is actually hop on to the system and look for Catalyst EX. So you can see it here. It's the uh, icon in the shape of the U-print, which will load up the Catalyst software. So I just load this up here. Now we're actually in the software. And the first thing that comes up is the general tab, where we can actually just simply look at the path, and uh, sorry, look at the uh, the platform, and then choose some of the settings around our particular um, uh, print. So the first thing we just want to check out is some of the properties. Our re layer resolution is 0.1. I'm going to choose 0.3. My model interior is going to be sparse, low density. That's uh, really for most prints, low density is going to be what you want. You don't want to waste material on things that aren't useful. Your support fill, you have surround, basic, or smart. Choose smart, and that will allow the system to pick the best way to support the rafting and the actual print. We're gonna have one copy, we're on a standard scale, and we're currently plugged into our Uprint Plus on the, uh, on the network here. It also has the definition of our materials, and our support, and how much is left of each material, and our status. So we're going to simply open up an STL and I'm going to try the recorder. So this is a, uh, a standard STL file which I've now loaded in. Again, I've chosen all my densities and uh, before we actually position it, we're simply just going to add it to our pack. So right down here, you can click add to pack and that's actually going to prepare it uh, basically prepare the g-code for this particular printer. Alright, you can see it's starting to build the support material that's going to be used and it's on the inside and out for this particular print. Alright, so now that we actually have our device here, our uh, print here, we can go to orientation and then check it out and that looks fine to me. You could actually like look at the layers, the bottom view, top view, et cetera, and make sure it's the way you want, depending on the type of thing you're printing. It might be better to put it on its side. The next thing we're gonna do is actually go to the pack. And this is the layout that's gonna have on the actual printing bed. So right now, it's smack right in the middle. So just to actually go over to the printer, So that means it's going to print here. You can actually see the four squares in which it's going to print. So that's basically just a lineup of what the print bed looks like. So that grid system will allow you to print where you want. And keep in mind that just the way the printer works, uh, the center location is preferential, but based on the quality of the print bed, etc., you might want different positioning to get better performance or to make sure that your rafting doesn't lift up, lift up in a particular situation. So from here, Actually, in this situation, we have one print, it looks good. I'm simply going to click print, which is sending the part to the printer. And that was it. So now if I head over to the system, it's idle and it has that part, recorder 2.2, sitting in it. And I have my support material and my print material, which uh, may or may not work in this situation. We hopefully have enough left. What you can do is actually, based on the amount of, of, of uh, uh, material the print takes, we can actually check out in Catalyst to see if we have enough. 
I think we should have enough to at least get going here. So now that the model's here, we're going to click start. And it goes through a warming process. So uh, in about uh, 20 minutes, we'll be able to uh, start the actual print. So our print has finished, and we can actually see that based on our submit time, our build time, when the estimated finish time was, we can currently see that she's completed. And we actually go over to the printer. We'll see the finished product here. So there we are. You can see the support material. The green unit's been currently sitting on standby because it printed and finished overnight. But uh, it's in standby and we're, we're fine as it sits. Open the door. And here we are. So the next step, we'll be actually taking our printed project and putting it into the cleaner. So you can see all the white support material that actually goes even in the rafting and the support of my little uh, printed recorder here. So what we're going to have to do is take it apart and then put it into the cleaning station. Okay, <clears throat> so each of these items has the raft and a little bit of cleanup from the support. But all in all, just gently take the pieces off. You can actually use a tool if you want to instead, and I'll do that with the next one here. But uh, just you know, looking at the support material here, in this case, it's um, <clears throat> almost able to rip off the support properly itself, but you can still see inside the material there is uh, a fair amount of, uh, of rafting there to take care of. As mentioned with the rafting, uh, you can actually use another type of device to actually gently scrape the uh, and wedge the actual print off. And depending on the type of print you have, this may be the preferential way of getting the, uh, the print off the, the bed. Like I said, it depends on exactly what your piece is. And just make sure to be gentle as the, uh, the printing is brittle and uh, you don't want to damage it or the bed. The beds are a couple dollars a piece and quite frankly you can reuse them a couple times before they go bad if you treat them well. You can see here, just in the light, you can see where the item had been printed. So it did bind to the bed a little bit and that's, it's designed to do that to get a good stable print. But of course, there's lots of usable bed here left and we can get a several prints off of this with, with varying degrees of quality if we treat this bed well. And again, reduce the cost for everyone that has to use the, the machines and the printers. So, next step actually, so we place the parts in the cleaning solution. There's no right or wrong way to, to place them in there. Perfect. And uh, we'll wait for uh, a couple hours and have the, the cleaning solution do its job. All right, so. It's been a couple, uh, a couple hours, and we can take our pieces out now, and take a peek at what we have. So right now, as we can see, the rafting is completely gone. Sorry, we've got our recorder holes, and uh, other than a little bit of cleanup and wash down, we are complete. So now that we're all said and done, we have our different pieces. We can actually do some basic assembly. Now it's nice and clean. And I can go for some recorder lessons now. <laughs>